Hi, my name is Dr. Rich Hilsen, and you're watching my channel, Knife Skills. Recently, I reacted to Dr. Glockenflecken, probably one of the best medical comedians out there, but there's an up and coming medical student that is making waves on TikTok, and I wanted to do a little bit of a reaction to his videos, and that's Preston. So let's dive in and see his take on medical culture. So what kind of specialties have you liked? Well, I hated medicine. I hated ob -GYN. It's gross. I'm not doing that. I hated psych. I'm in surgery right now and it's fine, I guess. Seems like you just listed a bunch of things that you don't like. Um, is there anything that you do like? Actually, I don't know. Sometimes I regret going into medicine. Like I feel like I could have been happy as just like an artist or something. But since I'm here, I might as well just do ortho anyway. Wow, that's a, okay. That. That's an interesting choice. What, what makes you think you want to do ortho if, if you don't want to be in medicine at all? Well, if I'm going to be in medicine, I might as well do something, you know? Why not do a specialty where you have enough free time to pursue those things that you care about outside of work? Like, a lot of anesthesiologists value that. And no, I, I don't think I want to do anesthesiology. I just want to do something, you know what I mean? Like, I want to actually do something. I feel like a lot of anesthesiologists would disagree with that statement. Yeah, and besides, like when I'm a orthopedic spine surgeon, I can just have a lot of free time anyways, and then I'll just be able to chill then. Right. One of the most confusing conversations you can have with a medical student is asking them what specialty they want to go into. You'd think most medical students would have a really clear idea, but it's a really hard decision and many of them struggle to figure out where their true calling is. This particular resident is sort of confabulating the value that they get from their job with the lifestyle that they might be able to experience or that job might offer. And that's a really tough challenge. Like where does that balance lie? And there's a lot of videos on YouTube, if you're watching this, that can help you figure out where do I lie between that balance of lifestyle versus the kind of experience I wanna get from the job itself. Let's see another one of Preston's videos. Hey, my name's, oh, well, we're not gonna schedule. Find the JH and tell us anything either. Just take the pager. Patients G2 fell out, and I didn't mean to get to it, but I caffeine pills before. How is it placed? The normal way. Okay, so the Gen Surge resident is asking about how the tube was placed. This is really relevant because gastroenterology, general surgery, interventional radiology, all of us will place feeding tubes. And depending on which service put it in, that will have an impact on who is responsible for that tube. And I think that's what he's getting at here. The general surgery resident doesn't want to deal with a tube that really should be taken care of by another service. And oftentimes they do call general surgery first because at the end of the day, if there's a big problem with the feeding tube, it would fall onto our shoulders. Who owns this G-Tube? My biggest regret is that I just didn't figure out that everything's competitive early enough. I think BIR dropped the note forever ago, but... Like, you can look up who put it in and then call that person. If you see pus, it's draining. Yeah, is this about the hernia? Have you ever drained a perianal abscess before? Yeah, you paged us. All I want from you is make sure his cheeks don't touch my cheeks. Can't reduce. <laughs> Ideally, you're not gonna get that close to the butt when you're draining an abscess, but it is one of the jobs that we have to do. It's strangulated. It means it's incarcerated. Yeah, that's what I just said. Only do surgery if you can't see yourself doing anything else. Skin changes? Yeah. We'll pop it in the chart. Okay, if I was interested in something else, I would have done it. If this hernia does have skin changes, that provider's going to. <laughs> so sometimes we can get a little bit upset if uh, one service is maybe exaggerating the referral. And so it's not uncommon for us to have a little bit of an emotional response on the way down to the consult. Usually though, by the time we're there in the department, we've chilled out, it's all good. We're all on the same team. Air fluid levels actually look like. What do you know about bowel obstructions? Fluid. Air. You ready to go? Let's so do this. Just give me a, give me a tall black coffee. Do whatever you want. You didn't do anything wrong. Sometimes they just call it like that. I know how that feels. You've been working all night. You're busy. Your pager's going off constantly. And just get that finally, that moment to sit down with a coffee and just hang with your residents, colleagues, or your med students. Why'd you go to med school? It's like one of those where nobody ever leaves. Like fucking 
chip on my shoulder, and I wanted to leave, worked my fucking ass off to get to this place. I'm on day 15 of 16. I sleep like shit. I haven't seen my girlfriend. To top it off, it's my fucking birthday. No, oh, dude. Like they said, this shit was gonna be fucking hard, but it's hard. What's that? I love this. Chocolate. Yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> I already got the Peloton. I got back from work, I poured a glass of wine, and I looked at it, and went straight to bed. Dude, these are good. How'd you find out about these? I have a $2,000 coat rack in my basement. Well, where'd you get that tumbler? Shit. I love that. If you gave me a cake pop on call, man, that would have made my day as a senior resident. So good advice there for any med student working with a senior resident. If they're having a bad day, cake pop. Man, we'd appreciate that so much. This one's called professionalism. We need to do something about this unprofessionalism in our hospital. My thoughts exactly. I mean, just the other day, I was hurling my instruments at my scrub tech because I couldn't figure out I don't like an army navy. And he already said to- What did he say? I don't want to work in this environment. My God, how unprofessional. Oh, the same thing happened to me just last Tuesday. I was telling my resident, if he can't find his thumb from his butthole, I was going to find someone who could. You know what he said to me? Please go on. That's abuse. My God, how unprofessional. That reminds me of when I was telling my resident to do all my notes by 6 p.m. because I didn't want to do them. As you shouldn't. But he said, It'll violate my work hours. Doesn't he know we didn't always have limits on work? How entirely unprofessional. Okay. There's a lot in this, even though it seems subtle. One thing about medicine is that we pride ourselves on our professionalism, but it's also used as a weapon sometimes. And so here's an example of a surgeon or really any medical teacher referring to people they're working with as unprofessional, and yet they're exhibiting those same unprofessional behaviors themselves, and that's constant. I can think of examples that are relatively extreme. I can think of examples where attendings had inappropriate relationships with residents and still would call other residents unprofessional. Whenever I hear someone in the healthcare system calling one person unprofessional, usually there's some unprofessional behaviors that they're hiding themselves. It's one thing that I've discovered. So I try to stay away from using such an inflammatory term as referring to someone as being unprofessional. But oftentimes that is the weapon that is used to attack colleagues and definitely used to attack trainees when people are not happy with their behavior, whether it's appropriate or not. Let's do one last one. This one has 3.7 million views and it's called C-section. You ever done a C-section before? I think I was born by one. Student, when shit goes sideways, the only thing I want you to do is get out of the Well, this one's gonna be number two then. <laughs> I love that. Is there anywhere I can plug my phone? In? I, that's not the appropriate place. <laughs> Sir, how did you get that in here? No, 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 no drinks for the. Okay, before we get started, Daniel. Campers, Fascia, and Scarpas. How many dudes are up? I love this. This setup is so good. Clearly in their laundry room, but they're absolutely killing it. Up there. Sir, I'm gonna need you to get down. Didn't you just study this? I think he's doing a good job. Is this gonna hurt? You're just gonna feel a little bit of pressure, Barb. Pressure. 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 You're doing good. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, and here's baby. Oh, there we go. Cheeto. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm a mom? Oh, it's tough. Okay, it's okay. Oh, 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 what the hell is that thing? Who's the cord? Um, Whose baby is that? That is not my look Is that a tumor? Right. Me... That's a russet. You're a russet, you moron. Oh, oh, the basin. oh god. Oh, yes, oh, sorry. That is such amazing. Okay. So good, babe. Uh, just go ahead and send that to Pat. Okay. It was all me, but yeah. It was it was both of us. So uh, yeah. What did you do where, where me and the, and the dad met? Where did you meet? Idaho. Oh, so that's where they made a mistake. 
Gynecologists always use the Keith needle when they're sewing up a C-section. So, a little unrealistic. Nice. Idaho and Iowa. Twins. Sweet. We love them short. They're very quiet. Well, are they too quiet? No, no. <laughs> Guys, something God damn it, no! <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. What a great job. In fact, I'm really impressed by the creativity there, especially the whole placenta. I think those were jumper cables. I'm not sure. Preston has a great feature on TikTok. I hope you go and follow him. Once again, thanks for watching. I want to say one more thing. I was given these scrubs by Vienna Scrubs. They're a company owned by a friend of a friend. These scrubs were given to me, but this is not a sponsored video. And I just want to say my appreciation to them for sending them to me. And I appreciate you if you checked out their website. I have a link in the description in the video below. Once again, thank you for watching. My name is Dr. Rich Hilsden. This is Night Skills. Have a great day.